you an opportunity to start to prepare for the exams. One of the criticisms that I received from one of your classmates uh, in a one-on-one -on -one meeting was that they thought that the test questions were harder than the questions we had been exposed to in warm-ups, exit tickets, and asynchronous assignments. I thought that was a great point, so I decided to include some actual test questions in your warm-ups and exit tickets, as well as in some of these asynchronous assignments that you all should be working on in the second half of class. So we always want to be sure that we're using the allotted time to do what we're supposed to be doing. That way we don't fall behind, but also because it prepares us for the test. Those 35 minutes are designed not for you all to go off and do whatever you want to do, but they're designed specifically so that you all can get these asynchronous assignments done, which are just as, if not more important than the first half of class when I'm lecturing. Okay, so do not overlook those 35 minutes. Don't overlook the warm ups and exit tickets. It's all a part of the overall equation, which will lead to your success. Nothing is done just to, you know, give you all busy work or just to waste your time. We do these things specifically to set you up for success. And you really do need to pay close attention to all of them. The lecture is important. Taking notes is important. Warm ups and exit tickets are important. Asynchronous assignments are important. And then, of course, studying to prepare for the exams is also another part of the equation. Today's lesson is going to be about meiosis. So yesterday we talked about mitosis. Very similarly, very similar sounding words. We call them homonyms, but they have different meanings and they're different processes. So we'll discuss this second process today, meiosis. Today is of course February 4th, 2021, and it is the second day of our third unit. The objective of today's lesson is to explain the role Yes, biologists will be able to explain the role of meiosis in sexual reproduction and genetic variation. And the essential question that we seek to answer today, how does meiosis ensure genetic diversity in sexually reproducing organisms? I'll stay on the screen because it sounds like we've got at least one person who's writing down the objective. I think that's a great idea, Jason. Uh, I would definitely encourage other people to do it as well. It just allows you to have a goal set for your overall, for the lesson. Okay. Let's do a quick quizzes to review mitosis because meiosis builds upon mitosis, similar processes. So we've got to have a foundational understanding of mitosis. So we'll review what we learned yesterday. If you can go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the game code 881374. I can also send a link specifically to so we'll take you directly to the game. You can click on that link or go to
one my quiz um eight one three seven four Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Gloria. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Abraham and Jason. Five folks so far, but we've got 17. I heard somebody else just come in. Thanks, Ayana. Let's get the next 10 people to join. We've got 16 people on the call. Thanks, Rudy. Let's take about 30 more seconds to join this game. I know some of us might have some internet connectivity problems, making it a little bit slower for us to join. Thank you, Monet. I can't see the code. Thank you, Brian. Okay, I'll send it again. You should just be able to click on this link that's in the chat. Thank you, Michaela. About 10 more seconds, of course, you'll be able to join even after we've started. Okay, and thank you, Fraylin. Thank you, Shade. Thank you, Ardesia. We're going to go ahead and get started. That's most of the people. Good job, folks. I appreciate you joining up quickly. So I believe there are 15 questions. Let's see if we can get to an accuracy of 70%, an overall class accuracy of 70. I'd love to be up there. Good job, Brianna. All right, we're at an accuracy of about 53%. Rudy's in the lead. Good job, Rudy and Brianna and Ayana. Keep going, Ayana's got a perfect score so far. Six questions in a row. Rudy's got a streak of three questions going. That accuracy is going, going up and up and up. Good job, folks. 59%, let's get up to 70%. I think we can get there. Sixty-one percent. Good job. Good job. Let's keep going. If you weren't able to join, 
the code is still at the top of the screen, and so is the link in the chat. Ayana with a big jump. Good job. Those of you who are playing but not in the top five, keep going. There's still a lot of movement taking place in the top five. Let's see if we can get that accuracy up. Okay, Rudy just finished up. Brianna's finished. Ayana has a few more questions to go. She's in second place right now, so we might see her take over first. But good job, Rudy. Good job, Brianna. Let's see if the remaining players can get our accuracy up. Michaela's got a good streak going herself, doing really well. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Ayana officially overtook Rudy to finish in first place. But Michaela is also making a climb towards the top. Good job, folks. Our accuracy is still sitting at about a 60%, but there's still uh, there are still people taking this quiz. Is, so let's see if we can get it up even higher. Michaela finishes in second place. Good job. On a streak of nine questions in a row. Let's see how many people are still testing, still doing this. Sade, Cindy, Breon. Okay. So keep going. We'll take about, let's see, two more minutes or so to let people wrap up. And then we'll take a look at some of these questions and see which ones we did well on and which ones we still need some, some help with. And in this time, while we're waiting for people to finish up, I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is send you all the link to our YouTube playlist. I know that some of you have missed a few days because of internet connectivity issues or doctor's appointments. And of course, those things happen. Those things come up. Um, and it's also OK to want to take a, a day away from the computer. But if you 
uh, are being a good, strong student, if you're if you're being active and proactive in your studying, then you might want to go back and find the lessons that you missed. So what I'll do now is send a link to our YouTube playlist with all of our recorded lessons so far. I also want to mention that I am in the process of producing a series of shorter videos that will be available to you all to just get the gist of each of our 30 standards and also to get some practice problems and hear me explain some of the practice problems as well. So be on the lookout for that. The other thing that I want to do is send the link that you all can, can go to to schedule appointments with me. I did have one of our classmates uh, successfully schedule an appointment with me. Uh, and, and this time we're just going to do some one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So I definitely encourage anyone who is interested to check out that Calendly link that I just sent to the chat. That'll be a great place for you all to get some personalized help if there's something that you're struggling with or anything that I can help you with. I really want to see all of you succeed in this class, and I believe that you all can. Um, but some of you are going to need a, a little bit more personal help. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. In fact, it shows your maturity that you're willing to seek that help out. So don't be shy. Come to me with your problems, and, and we'll figure them out so that we can continue to improve. Yes, Shade, I already responded to your email. All right, cool. And Brian is finishing up, but we're going to take a look at some of these questions. We're at a, a pretty good accuracy. I wanted 70%. 61 is not horrible. Um, and uh, I think there's room for improvement there. There's always room for improvement. So we're going to take a look at some of the questions where we struggle. Number 12. What does not happen during interphase? What does not happen during interphase? Um, so this is a question that kind of requires you to know two different things. Number one, what is interphase? And number two, what are the different parts of interphase? So can someone tell me when does interphase happen? When does interphase happen? Okay, uh, I think maybe I know what you're saying. Uh, it does, it happens really at the beginning of the cell cycle. Remember, it's the first phase of the cell cycle. Uh, and thank you, Chandler, for scheduling that appointment. So I just wanted to acknowledge that Chandler successfully scheduled an appointment. That's an excellent job. We'll make sure we get that on the calendar and, and get a chance to talk one on one. Um, so good job, Chandler. And anybody else who's interested, please go ahead and do that. Take advantage of this opportunity. Um, but what was I saying? So interphase is the first part of the cell cycle. It comes right before what we call M phase. And that's mitosis, but it could also be meiosis, which we'll introduce today. Um, so interphase happens first, but there are three parts of interphase. Does anybody remember what those three parts are? Hopefully you all have notes that you can refer back to. The question, just to repeat it, what are the three parts of interphase? Thank you, Reed. We've got G1, then there's an S phase, and that stands for synthesis, and then there's G2. G1 and G2, we can think of those Gs as standing for growth or for gaps. And in those phases, G1 and G2, the cell is growing and it's preparing itself for cell division. During S phase, something really special happens. Does anybody remember what happens during S phase?
Good. Well, it stands for synthesis, but what exactly is being synthesized, Jason or anyone else? The S does stand for synthesis, but what happens, what is being synthesized? Thank you, Rudy, yeah. During S, during synthesis, this is when the DNA is replicated. We're making a copy of the DNA. So the question asks, which of the following does not happen during interphase? Well, we know that cell growth happens during G1 and G2. We know that DNA replication happens during S. And we also know that cell division happens during mitosis, otherwise known as M phase. So by the process of elimination, we're left with only one answer, protein synthesis. I'm sorry. The only, we're left with one answer. The only thing that does not happen during interphase is cell division. Protein synthesis does happen because the cell is growing. It's making more proteins for itself. It's preparing itself to divide. So the only thing that doesn't happen is cell division. Yeah. So five of you got that right. Now, there were some other questions that we struggled with as well. Um, let's look, take a look at number 14. Uh oh, so this is a question from unit one. DNA is an example of which type of macromolecule? So we had nine people get that incorrect. Um, this should be a pretty simple and easy question because the NA in DNA stands for nucleic acid. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. So it is an example of a nucleic acid. That should be pretty simple. If you're still missing that, as nine of you did, please, please, please make sure you go back to unit one and, and cover your, some of your missing assignments um, because that we go over that pretty extensively in unit one. All right, let's see, are there any others that we... Seven, seven, eight. Okay, number eight, at what stage during mitosis does the nuclear envelope break up. So does anybody remember what the answer to that question is? When does the nuclear envelope break up during mitosis? And let's hear from some different voices. I'm hearing a lot from Jason and Rudy today. Can we hear from some other voices as well? Fraylin, what did you say to number eight? What was your answer? At what stage during mitosis does the nuclear envelope break up? Fraylin, are you there? Do you know the answer here? Or Michaela, you did pretty well today. Or Ayana, you did really well today. What did you all say to this question? Number eight. Good, thank you, Ayana. Yeah, the answer is prophase. Um, and hopefully, again, cannot underscore the importance of taking notes. This is something that we covered specifically and explicitly in our notes yesterday. So prophase, this is when the cell has to make the contents of the nucleus available. So that membrane that is around the nucleus, it has to disappear. It has to dissolve in order for us to have access to what's inside. We're trying to gain access to the DNA that's inside of the nucleus. In order for that to happen, the membrane of the nucleus needs to dissolve. It needs to break apart. So the answer here is prophase. Okay. So we, we 
this gives you again this is just basic stuff guys this is stuff that uh, i'm going to ask that you make sure you have done that asynchronous assignment from yesterday if you're still confused if you need more help we we, we can we have ways of addressing that we have ways of providing help um but i, I don't know what help you need if you're not reaching out if you're not participating in class it's impossible for me for me to know uh, unfortunately i can't see your faces because your cameras aren't on uh, the only thing that I'm left with in order to know how well you're understanding the material are these assignments. So please, 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 if you if you don't understand something, if you missed something in the notes, please let me know so we can read, we can address that. Um, it's it's okay not to know something, but it's not okay to not know it forever. Eventually, we've got to figure it out. Okay, we're gonna go back to the notes. It's a short lesson, which is why I spent so much time just now on the quizzes. Um, Oops, did not mean to close my thumb. Skipping that. All right, we did this practice problem yesterday, but all I asked yesterday was for you to put them in the correct order. Today, I want you to give me the correct names of these pictures. So picture one, what phase is this representing? And there's a word bank available to you there. We've got the four steps of mitosis as well as interphase. So picture number one, which of those steps is represented here? Thank you, Ayana. Yeah, this is anaphase. How could you tell? How did you know that, Ayana? Why don't you teach our, uh, our classmates something? Wonderful, yeah. So in picture number one, we can literally see the sister chromatids being pulled apart from one another. They're being pulled apart. So this is a clear indication that this is anaphase. Remember, the ANA prefix in anaphase literally means to be pulled apart. Okay, picture number two, what's represented here? Yeah, so Ardesia was right on this one. This one is actually interphase, but Sade, I can see why you would say prophase, but there is an important difference that I'm gonna point out um, between interphase and prophase. We'll talk about that in, in shortly. Uh, yes, you, you're, on, you're on the right track. It has something to do with this circle here. So this is interphase. We can tell because essentially nothing is happening here. It looks like a normal cell. What about number three? What step is represented here? To me, this is always probably the easiest one to identify. Good, Rudy. And how can you tell that this is metaphase? Yes, I, yeah, Shade, thank you. So it's like a line through the middle of the cell. All of the chromosomes are lined up in the, in the middle of the cell. And meta, the prefix meta in metaphase means middle. So when you see these chromosomes lined up at the equator, uh, you can tell that this must be metaphase. All right, now number four, Shade, what is this? Good, this is prophase now. So what you were talking about, I assume, with this circle is that the nuclear membrane, which is represented by the circle here, is solid. It's a solid line in interphase. In prophase, it becomes a dotted line because the nuclear membrane is starting to disappear. It's starting to dissolve. And so what happens when the nuclear membrane dissolves is that uh, the chromosomes on the inside are now going to be exposed. All right, so it's important that we identify that. It's a small, subtle difference, but it is an important difference. We can also see centrioles and spindle fibers that are coming into existence here as well. They're moving into place. 
So that's another indicator of prophase. And so that leaves us with only one more. What is step number five or picture number five? Good, that's telophase. And we can see that the cell is finally starting to split. We can see the cleavage in the middle as it gets kind of pinched apart. And the nuclear membranes are appearing. This time we've got two different nuclei because we're gonna end up with two different cells. So again, you will be asked to identify steps of mitosis um, based on pictures. So I want you all to be pretty clear about this. This might be a good one that you take a picture of or you take a screenshot of, you try to reproduce it in your own notes. Uh, I'm a big fan of pictures, guys. Um, when I, I was studying in classes that were really heavy on diagrams and pictures, it always helped me to redraw them, reproduce them in my own notes instead of just having pictures of them. When you really, really are challenging yourself to, to draw your own pictures, it goes a long way in terms of how, much, how well you can remember them. All right. So what is happening in this picture? It looks like some type of abstract, futuristic virus of sorts. But what is what is actually happening? And no, they are not Squidward. I can see why you would say that. What kind of cells, Adesia? Because you're right, they are cells. We've got a lot of different cells here specifically two types of cells. Good, yeah, so the, the pink ones with these long flagella, that's another throwback to unit two, these are sperm cells. They have these long tails, we call them flagella, and they help the sperm cells to swim. So what is the big one in the middle in that case? Yes, I, 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 it's funny that you assume or you assign the word holy to it. But yes, it is an egg cell. Um, so this process in that case is the process of fertilization. We've got sperm cells that are surrounding an egg cell. More than likely, one of these sperm cells has already penetrated the egg cell because something special happens. Once one cell gets in, the, cell, the egg cell kind of closes itself off and it doesn't make itself available to any other uh, sperm cells. So one of these cells is probably already embedded into the egg cell, but this is the process of fertilization. And fertilization is a type of sexual reproduction. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. <clears throat> so yesterday we talked about mitosis, which is one of the M phases. The other one is called meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division that is used to make gametes, which are the sex cells, the sperm and the eggs. Meiosis is used to make the cells that are needed for sexual reproduction. So meiosis is used to make sperm cells and egg cells. Just like with mitosis, anytime we're talking about M phase, it doesn't matter if it's meiosis or mitosis, beforehand, we have to go through interphase, which is what's, what's being said in this pink section. Interphase has to occur first. We have to replicate the DNA.
So remember, gametes are sperm and egg cells. They're the sex cells. The other type of cell, basically every other cell in your body, we call them somatic cells. Somatic cells. Okay. Now, meiosis is different than mitosis. Mitosis is just one round of cell division. Meiosis requires two rounds of cell division. Mitosis was used to make only two daughter cells. Here, we've got meiosis making four daughter cells. So in your mind, I want you to start envisioning a Venn diagram of some of the differences and similarities between meiosis and mitosis. And you should probably even consider writing it in your notes. There are some crucial differences, but also some crucial similarities between them. The daughter cells that are produced by meiosis are genetically unique. Each one of them is gonna be slightly different than the others. And these cells are considered haploid cells, which means that they have half the, the amount of DNA of their parent cell. So instead of having the 46 chromosomes that a parent cell, a human parent cell would have, after meiosis, the daughter cells would only have 23. They have half the number. That's why we call them haploids. All right. So again, this is why we call them haploid cells because they end up with half the number of chromosomes. So in humans, all of our cells, all of our somatic cells have 46 chromosomes. We got 23 chromosomes from our fathers and 23 chromosomes from our mothers. But in this process of meiosis, the process that produces sperm cells and that produces egg cells, we cut that number in half. That way, when we end up having our own children, we are delivering half of our DNA to them. And then the other half is provided by the person who we choose to have a child with. So you start off with a diploid. That's the full set of chromosomes. The parent cell is a diploid. It's a, it has two sets of chromosomes. And you end up with four different haploids. So this would be one sperm cell that has 23 chromosomes, one sperm cell that has another that has 23 chromosomes, another sperm cell that has 23, and a fourth that has 23. Each of them is gonna be slightly different. This is why um, the same two people can have 20 kids and they will all be slightly different. They'll all, be, they'll all have slightly different genetic characteristics. Yes, they will probably look similar. They might have similar personalities, but they will have some genetic differences. Some might be taller than others. Some might have darker hair than others, lighter eyes than others. Some might be more athletic than others. Some might be more artistic than others. These are things that are a result of genetics, partially.
All right. So meiosis follows those same four steps, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But because it has two rounds of cell division, it does each of those things twice. So we refer to them as prophase one and prophase two, metaphase one and metaphase two. So as we will see on the next slide, the, the cell will go through prophase one, then metaphase one, then anaphase one, then telophase one, and then cytokinesis. And we'll form two daughter cells, but then those two daughter cells will go through prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, and then another set of cytokinesis. And so your end result is four daughter cells. Meiosis follows the same four steps, but it does each of them twice. Same things are happening in these steps. So in prophase, we still see the nuclear membrane dissolving. We still see the centrioles and the spindle fibers moving into place. In metaphase, we still see the chromosomes moving at the, into the middle of the cell. In anaphase, we still see the chromatids being pulled apart from one another. Same things are happening, but it just does them twice. So here's a brief comparison. Again, you want to be thinking about a Venn diagram to compare mitosis and meiosis. Have one written out, drawn out in your notes, just to start to give you those visual images. Meiosis follows the same four steps, but it does it twice. Here we can see it even better. So prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, cytokinesis. Prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, cytokinesis. Notice that in anaphase, or I'm sorry, in the first meiosis, in meiosis one, what we're doing is pulling chromosomes apart. We're separating the chromosomes. So you remember our cells have 46 chromosomes, but they're paired up. So you've got chromosome one, you get chromosome one from your dad and chromosome one from your mom and they paired up. They are what we call homologous chromosomes because they're from the same pair. You've got chromosome 14 from your dad, chromosome 14 from your mom, they pair up. They're called homologous chromosomes. Chromosome 20 from your dad, chromosome 20 from your mom, they're paired up. And we've got 23 pairs. So in meiosis one, what we're doing is separating the pairs. We're separating the, the chromosome that you got from your dad from the chromosome that you got from your mom. But it's not exactly the same chromosome that you got from each parent because they also go through a process of crossing over, which is something we'll talk more about tomorrow. During crossing over, which happens during prophase one, during crossing over, this, the, the chromosomes are gonna exchange some of their genetic information. So let me, let me show you a picture of exactly what I mean. As we can see in this picture, we've got homologous chromosomes. Chromosome six from our dad in blue, chromosome six from our mom in red. They pair up, that's why we call them homologous. 
they're homologs of each other, similar to each other. They go through this process of crossover during prophase one, where some of the red chromosome is going to switch over to the blue, and some of the blue chromosome is going to switch over to the red. So now they've got a little bit of genetic information from the other chromosome. Okay, so it's not exactly, this blue is no longer the same that it once was. It's not the exact same chromosome that you got from your dad. It's got slightly different genetic information. And same thing with the red chromosome. It's not the exact same one you got from your mom. Now it's got a little bit different genetic information. So that process of crossover is something we'll talk more about tomorrow. But during meiosis one, those pairings of the chromosomes get pulled apart. During meiosis two, the actual chromosome itself gets pulled apart into chromatids. So you can kind of see that down here. The X itself gets pulled apart. All right. So we start off with a somatic cell. Again, all cell division needs to be preceded by interphase. The cell has to go through interphase before it can go through cell division. So interphase is when we copy our DNA. That's, that happens during S. Excellent job, Ardesha. Thank you. It happens during S of interphase. So 46 becomes 92, and then 92 splits up into 46. But notice that in meiosis, we undergo that same cell division a second time, and we split up. This time we don't copy the DNA first. So what ends up happening is that you end up with half the number of chromosomes. So 46 gets doubled to 92. 92 goes through meiosis one and becomes 46. Then 46 goes through meiosis two and becomes 23. So in a koala, koala bears have 16 chromosomes. So how many, what numbers should be here after DNA replication? Once the cell goes through synthesis during interphase and it makes a copy of its DNA, how many chromosomes will it have? Good, Rudy. 32. And then it goes through meiosis one and it produces two new daughter cells. How many chromosomes will those daughter cells have? Good. Thank you, Brianna. But then it goes through a second round of cell division called meiosis two. So the last four daughter cells, now keep in mind, these would only be sperm and egg cells, but how many chromosomes will they have? If we're splitting it in half one more time, how many chromosomes should be down here? Thank you, Shade and Rudy. Yeah, we have eight. So again, I'm gonna walk through the process. We start off with a normal cell. We call this actually a germ cell because there are specific cells that will eventually, you know, in the male, in the human male body, there's a specific type of cell that produces sperm. In the human female body, females are born with every single egg cell that they will ever have. So even before a female human is born, that female human is producing egg cells. By the time they're born, they're no longer producing any new ones. So uh, there are specific cells that produce egg cells and specific cells that produce sperm cells. We can call them germ cells. So a germ cell has, uh, in a koala, 16 chromosomes. That germ cell goes through DNA replication, so it doubles, it copies its DNA. So now this has 32. After one round of cell division, we slice that amount, of chromo that amount of DNA in half. So instead of 32 chromosomes, we're back down to 16. But meiosis goes through two rounds of cell division. So after meiosis two, we do another round of cutting in half, we end up with eight chromosomes. So the sperm cells and the egg cells are called haploids because they have half of the total amount that was in the original cell. All right. 
So we've only got 11 minutes left. There is an asynchronous assignment as well as an exit ticket, but you guys do have a lunch break coming up too. So maybe you'll just go ahead and knock them both out. I think that would be a great idea. Uh, the assignment is actually pretty short. It's only, I think, 15 questions, maybe not even that many. And it, it's none, they're all multiple choice. So uh, it shouldn't take you long at all. And then the exit ticket is only four questions, also multiple choice. So go ahead and knock those out. I will be here on mute if you all have any questions at all. Okay, good job. So I can see that Shade, Jason, Chandler, Ayana, and Rudy are all working on their assignments. That's what everybody should be doing right now. We shouldn't still be looking at Google Meets. We should be navigating the Canvas. Good job, Michaela and Ardeja. I can see you all are working also. Use this time wisely, people, so you don't start to fall behind. These minutes are built into class for a specific reason.
Okay, folks, thank you all for being here and working hard. I really appreciate um, some of you who stepped up today and participated a lot more than I'm used to you participating. So let's keep that same momentum. Uh, we're gonna keep improving. We've got a lot to learn, but you guys had a good day today. So let's finish the week off strong tomorrow. Uh, I will talk to you all then. Have a good day.